Conservation Plan. That plan was uh, made public about 2008. It was a result of a lot of research, a lot of uh, methodologies put together by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Brock Grouse Society, a lot of nonprofit organizations, universities, etc. But the best collective information to date together and put together a long-term plan to address the decline in woodcock population. Mark showed you some graphics. I'm going to do some more here in a minute. But uh, the national trend in woodcock population has been about 1.2% over about 40 or 50 years. So it was obvious that something had to be done. You've already heard the messages this morning. Prior speakers have been a good job at the stage. I'm here just to tell you about what the Wildlife Management Institute, Institute is doing as, if you will, a facilitator to put on the ground what has been described as the necessary approach in the National Woodcock Conservation Plan. Okay, uh, I was hired specifically to work in the Appalachian Mountains Woodcock Initiative. There's a half a dozen initiatives for point of conversation that first started up in the New England states, moved over to the Great Lakes region, then they started down the Appalachian Mountain region. Uh, each of these initiatives are uh, built around what we call bird conservation regions, okay? And I handed out two publications. Uh, the smaller one is a very simple publication just to get the message out about why wildlife need junk forest. The prior speakers today have already got that message out. The larger publication is state of the art. This is only about two years off the press. The best collective heads in the nation put together what are the best management practices, if you will, for managing woodcock in the Southern Appalachian Mountains. Companion documents are also available for those other initiatives. Mark mentioned to you that it's not necessarily about the species of plant, but it's about the structure. Okay, and that is true, all right? Different ecological areas have different uh, types of plants, etc. If you're interested in working locally, all right, and this publication, honestly, for folks that live here on the eastern part of Maryland, isn't your best document. Uh, we have another one coming out for the Atlantic Coast. It's going to be a little more fine-tuned, but the principles are the same. All right, good stuff in here. Also, while I have a minute, and I'll show you at the end of my program, uh, the website for all this information, www timberdoodle.org, okay? Very dynamic website. Uh, just this past week, uh, the webmaster put up a whole new section on science. I mean, it is the best place to go in this country or probably in the world for information on woodcock. Okay, uh, some of this stuff is gonna be a little bit redundant with prior speakers, but uh, you can see uh, early increase in early successful habitat warranted uh, in many states across the uh, range of woodcock, the state wildlife conservation plans have identified this species and a lot of other young uh, early successional species that are really in, in drastic need for some help. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has named it as a national focus species. Now that's big time recognition uh, for the needs of, of that uh, woodcock. Mark talked a little bit about the uh, what has happened nationally, and it really is a habitat issue. Uh, any of you, I'm a rabbit hunter at heart, and in places where I used to rabbit hunt when I was a kid, you walk back now, what do you have? You have old immature sized forests. The same thing with the birds that Dr. Bell mentioned, it's, it's the same package. If you look at the current stand size distribution, these are the states in the Appalachian Initiative, all right? The yellow bars are salt timber sized timber. Okay? That's what's making up the basic view of the landscape. All right? The pole sized stuff, the lighter green bars, the young stuff is the blue bars. There's not much of it out there. All right? And if you look at this sta states across all five states, it's approximately 10% of the forest land cover is in young forest. 
right? We've got to turn that around. We've got to move that on. What have been the trends in that structure, all right? Maryland's a little bit better off than some of the other states. And again, uh, this dynamic here is for the Appalachian part of Maryland, which is up, up west here. But we have a lot of public land up there. And they have a very active timber harvest program. On Green Ridge State Forest, they're harvesting about 200 acres a year, and they have been for 30 years. So that's creating some nice young forest. Savage River State Forest is about 60,000 acres. So because of the public land component, Maryland's doing a little bit better. The problem is it's not where Woodcock needed to be. It's Oak Hickory Forest. It's up on the drier ridges. The Woodcock need young forest where we have moist soil. So that's a little bit deceiving. But generally speaking, we need to turn that around. Uh, we've already made the pitch that early successional structures declining. These are, for, these are some of the reasons uh, for that decline. Mark also mentioned that it's basically a private land issue. Uh, in most of the country, uh, you know, uh, most private landowners own about 10 acres or less on average. So it's a big, uh, big challenge. Mark showed some of the, he talked about the singing ground surveys, he showed you the graphic about the decline in the numbers. This is just another way of publishing that information. Uh, in the 1970s, the darker red, the pink, shows you uh, the density of woodcock uh, determined from the male singing ground surveys. In 2000s, 30 years later, you can see as we move uh, into the south, uh, the, the number and density of those breeding males is much less than it used to be. This is the same, uh, same graphic that Mark shows showing since 1968, uh, continual decline. Uh, if we look specifically in the western portion of Maryland, over here on the left, the number of singing males in 1970 was, it was extrapolated uh, through the singing round survey to be just about 2,500 males. Uh, 35 years later, there's been about a 56% reduction in the number of singing males. Uh, and if you get around Maryland much, uh, you know, with the urban development, it's pretty easy to see why that's happened. We just, places where there used to be uh, woodcock habitat, you know, in the 60s and 70s, now shopping centers and highways. So it's a, it's a pretty simple thing. Uh, how do we put the brakes on? What do we do? And Mark showed a, a graphic to show that now finally that top <coughs> population is starting to level off a little bit. We'd like to see it start to go the other way. It's a significant, ambitious effort that it's going to take to turn this around. In Maryland alone, over the next 10 years, we need to uh, develop or create, if you will, over 30,000 acres of young forest habitat. Uh, that's very ambitious. Are we going to be able to do that? Probably not, but it gives us a goal. It, it's a good educational tool. It shows us what we need to do and what our direction needs to be. Uh, as far as, and again, this, this program is geared towards Western Maryland, but it's the same throughout the state. Uh, we, want to, we want to halt the decline of populations, improve hunting and viewing opportunities. Uh, and really, all this, although this, this all started from the development of the Woodcock Conservation Plan nationally, as the years go on, in fact, I just attended, Mark and I were at a meeting a couple weeks ago at State College. This whole initiative now is actually occurring with the collaboration of the Audubon Society and the bird folks into really not a woodcock or a grouse focus, but a focus on young forest, early successional habitat. There's a whole cohort of species that uh, you know, need this kind of habitat. And it's a better sell, if you will. You know, if you're a woodcock or a grouse enthusiast, you're listening to me and you're saying, yeah, I want to do that. Well, some folks aren't, but some folks are birders. And some folks have other interests. So if we can bring all that collective energy together and call it a early successional initiative, I think we can make a lot more headway. <coughs> 